when the turks came to india they had their own taste they had their own traditions their own culture and they were islamic people and they were uh, required to offer namaz and muslims are expected to offer namaz five times a day and they are also asked to offer namaz in congregation in groups and in queues so they wanted to construct huge gateways to take entry at a particular time and to make exit at the same time so they were required to build cut to construct huge gateways and it was not possible it was not possible to construct huge gateways larger gateways using lintel and beam method of architecture and before the turks lintel and beam method means a flat roof and so many pillars a hall based on or any structure which is based on flat roof and so many pillars is called lintel and beam method of architecture so before the turks when uh, indian artisans they started constructing their own buildings and structures they use flat roof and based on pillars but the turks they had their own requirements and they wanted to construct huge halls sorry a uh, huge gateways and also pillarless halls huge gateways and pillarless halls and it was not possible to construct huge gateways and pillarless halls using uh, lintel and beam method of architecture so they added another method in the art and architecture called arch and doom method d o m e doom arch and doom method or gumbaj or mehrab gumbaj and mehrab method of architecture and with the help of arch and doom method of architecture they started construction of gateways large gateways and pillarless halls and for the first time construction of pillarless halls uh, construction of mihrabs in fact it was started or it was introduced in india by the founder of the delhi sultanate named gayasuddin sorry qutbuddin aibak so qutbuddin aibak was the first sultan who started construction of arches and when he got constructed two mosques first one at delhi and uh, another one at ajmer called kuwatul islam mosque and dhai uh, din ka jhopda mosque respectively so he added so many arches or larger larger gateways and uh, construction of dooms or gumbaj it was for the first time started during the reign of another sultan of the delhi sultanate who belonged to the khalji dynasty named alauddin khalji so alauddin khalji was the first sultan who is credited to have constructed scientific dooms but he or his artisans they did a mistake while constructing a doom or gumbaj they took a square basic plan and base of a doom is circular and a circle is not well fitted on a square basic plan so when they constructed a doom on alai darwaza that doom was so ugly and smaller in shape while uh, lodi sultans or the sultans who belong to lodi dynasty so they they started construction of lodis see so let's have a quick revision so this one <coughs> development of do dooms it was for the first time started by 
Alauddin Khilji when he got constructed Alai Darwaja and Alai Darwaja, this building which is named Alai Darwaja, it served entry gateway to the Kuwatul Islam Mosque. And so using a square basic plan, it was not possible for the artisans to construct a huge dome. So that's why they built a smaller dome without having any neck or base. It's just fitted on the roof. So that's why it's bit smaller and not so beautiful or other ugly doom. But even if this doom is not so smart and beautiful, this was the first scientific doom that was constructed in the history of India. So it has its own importance of being first scientific doom. And later on, Khaljis, sorry, uh, Lodhis, L-O-D-H-I-S, Lodhi Sultans. So when the Lodhi Sultans, when they started construction of tomb, T-O-M-B, tomb, tomb means Makbara. So where a dead body is buried deep down into the soil called Makbara or Mausoleum, also known as Mausoleum or tomb. And Lodhi period is famous for construction of large number of tomb or mausoleum. And when the Lodhis, when they started construction of tomb uh, uh, and uh, they, they were required to construct domes, gumbaj, and instead of taking a square or rectangular basic plan, they started construction of octagonal basic building, octagonal basic plan. And now, when they, start, when they took octagonal basic plan, it became easier for them to construct bigger domes and having neck. Bigger dome and having rounded dome though and having a neck or a base. So same tomb and dome. Light light thoda dekhaya gaya hai. And in course of time, when the Delhi Sultanate was replaced by the Mughals in the year 1526, Delhi Sultanate was replaced by a Mughal named Jahiruddin Muhammad Babar. Babar was the founder of the Mughal Empire and he was called Mughal because he was half Turk and half Mongol. So from father's side, he belonged to Timarlain, Tamurlan, one of the greatest warrior of his time. And from his mother's side, he belonged to Chengiz Khan, another great, one of the greatest warrior of the ages. Chengiz Khan. It's not Chengiz Khan. It's Zingiz Khan. He was a Mongoloid. Zingiz. Z-E-N-G-E-I-S. Zingiz. Q-A-A-N. So, commonly known as Chengiz Khan. So, Babur was half Turk and half half Mongoloid, half Mongol. So that's why Babar, uh, he, he, he came to be called the Mughal. And his empire he founded came to be known as the Mughal Empire. But very soon Babar died when he became the Sultan Badshah or the Emperor in 1526. In the 1530 he died, he passed away. He died of any kind of disease uh, for which we are not aware of. And he was succeeded by his son Humayu and Humayu ruled till 1556 but in two uh, span of time, two phases. And in the year 1556 when Humayu fell from the stairs of his library at Delhi, he was succeeded by his minor son Jalaluddin Muhammad Akbar. Ritik Roshan of Jodha Akbar. Jalaluddin Muhammad Akbar. So Ritik Roshan was interested, Akbar was, was interested in the sphere of art and architecture. And Akbar, or actually uh, stepmother of Akbar, stepmother of Akbar and widow of Humayun, his father Humayun, named Haji Begum. She wanted to construct a tomb for her diseased husband, Humayun. Wo ek magbara banwana chati thi Humayun ke liye. Ba Akbar ki mother dousri thi, Haji Begum dousri thi. Step mother thi uske. So she wanted to construct a tomb. T-O-M-B. Tomb or magbara or mausoleum. And 
uh, she asked for that and Akbar was ready for that. He is okay. So when you want to construct a tomb for my father and your husband, so it's quite a fine thing. So he started, he, op he passed an order to construct a tomb for Humayun. And uh, on the orders of Akbar, a tomb was constructed for his father Humayun at Delhi. And this tomb is made up of red sandstone and white marble. Red sandstone, a combination of red sandstone and a white marble. It's a larger mausoleum or it's a larger makbara. And the Mughal artisans, they when they got constructed a doom on the tomb, upper part of the tomb called doom or gumbaj, they got constructed a rounded, rounded doom with a base or neck, but it's a rounded, massive but rounded doom and it's totally made up of white marble but building is a combination of red sandstone and white marble beautifully fitted red sandstone and white marble and later on when Shah Jahan so Jahan Akbar died in the 1605 he was succeeded by his son uh, Jahangir but Jahangir died in 1627 or 28 and he was succeeded by his son Shah A. Jahan Shah means the emperor, I A preposition, emperor of Jahan, this world, emperor of the world. Though he was the emperor of Hindustan, but he took this title of Shah A Jahan, Shah Jahan. Hana? So Shah Jahan, Shah Jahan's period, Shah Jahan's reign is called the golden period, golden period in the sphere of art and architecture and when Shah Jahan when he ordered construction of a tomb for his wife deceased wife Mumtaz Mahal but at Agra at Agra and when the Mughal artisans when they got constructed a tomb which is better known as tomb of the tomb of Mumtaz Mahal Mumtaz Mahal ka makbara better known as Taj Mahal because uh, Mumtaz Mahal her name was Arjumand Bano Begum. Arju. Wish. Arjumand. And she was very beautiful. It's said that she was very beautiful. And these are not my words. <laughs> According to contemporary historian. So she was very beautiful. And Shah Jahan had 14 children with that relationship. And finally she died. Uh, 14th jo baby ho tha na, us time pe uske death ho gai. So, when she passed away, Shah Jahan ordered construction of a tomb. So, Arjuman for Arjuman Bano Begum. But Shah Jahan conferred upon her a title. Shah Jahan conferred upon her a title of Mumtaz Mahal. Mumtaz Mahal. Mahal means the palace. Mumtaz means crown. Crown of the palace. She was conferred a title. So uska naam nahi tha, uska title tha. And she was Arjumand Bano Begum. So, this, when this mausoleum was built for Arjumand Bano Begum, better known as the Taj, Shah Jahan got constructed a massive doom, but uh, much against the doom of Humayu's tomb, which is rounded in shape. This particular doom is not a rounded one. This doom is a bulbous doom or onion shaped or guava shaped doom and one of the most beautiful and one of the most scientific and symmetrical double dome. Double dome, even uh, hum, uh, that dome of Humayus tomb is also a rounded double dome. That is rounded double dome, this one. It's a rounded double dome having an inner dome and taking support from inner doom, outer main outer doom was constructed. And uh, when Shah Jahan got constructed this doom, so even this doom is a double doom, having inside having an inner doom and taking support from inner doom, and outer doom was constructed. So it's a double doom, but it's not a rounded double doom. It's bulbous or onion shape or guava, also known as guava shaped doom. So uh, we could find a gradual development 
gradual development of the domes right from the days of Alauddin Khilji when he got constructed so ugly dome and this is the most beautiful dome of the world. So there is a gradual, gradual development. So this style of architecture, this pattern of architecture is called arch and arch and dome method of architecture. So constructing mehrabs and domes and uh, Mehraps were for the first time constructed by or on the orders of uh, Qutbuddin, Abak and see this arch and these arches now in ruined structure not in very good condition these arches were constructed on the orders of the founder of the Delhi Sultanate Qutbuddin, Abak and these arches or these mehraps were constructed for uh, Kuwatul Islam mosque as the entry gateways by musalmano ko ek saath namaz padhna hai ekdam bheed ho jayegi andar ghusenge to fir ek ikatthe bahar niklenge fir bheed hogi so to avoid overcrowding to avoid rush that's why they wanted to construct larger gateways and uh, and kutbuddin abak got constructed these uh, arches and later on when he got constructed another mosque at ajmer and even for that mosque he also added some more arches called dhai din ka jhopda Dai Din Ka Jhopla Mosque and later on and this pattern of uh, constructing mihrab was continued even up to the reign of Jahangir, the Mughal Emperor Jahangir, right from the days of Qutbuddin Abak till the reign of Jahangir. But when Shah Jahan became the emperor, he was not interested in constructing simple arches. So these arches are so simple, not so beautiful actually. And when Shah Jahan became the emperor, Shah Jahan started construction of, instead of constructing simple arches, Shah Jahan started construction of foliated, this one, foliated arches. And construction of foliated arches and construction of double, uh, bulbous double domes, these two patterns were added by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan and also followed by the sul sultans and rulers and the kings of other provincial dynasties as well. And even in the Sikh architecture, you could easily observe these two things for so many Gurudwaras. So even if you uh, pay a visit to a Gurudwara belonging to 18th or 19th century common, common era, Gurudwara's domes of Gurudwara. Gurudwara may be Gumbaj Bantana. So following same pattern, having a base and a bulbous, bulbous double dome. And mehrabs, not very popular among the six still. Uh, so arches and mehrabs and minarets was another. Islamic conception but mi construction of minarets or minaras it was not entirely a new or in in uh, innovation of the Muslims and even uh, right from the days of ancient Roman Empire the Roman people were already aware of construction of huge domes and arches. So construction of domes and arches these two elements were not entirely new but adopted extensively by the Muslim rulers and Muslim artisans. So the Muslims, they learnt this art of construction of arches and domes from the Romans. From the Romans. And they learnt this construction of minarets from the Greeks. So for the first time in this world, minarets were constructed by the Greeks as the watch towers. Nigrani karne ke liye kilon ka watch towers. So, but the Muslims, they took that pattern of construction of minarets from the Greeks and from the Romans and they started construction of minarets alongside, along with the mosques for the muajjins to call faithful to offer namaj in the mosque. So, minarets were constructed. और उस पे चढ़ के वो मोजिन जो होता है ना वो अजान देता है वो बोलता है ला इलाहा इल्लल्लाह लाइक दैट इन दिस एंड दिस एंड दिस तो बोलता है अल्लाह इज द ग्रेटेस्ट अल्लाह इज द वन एंड नन अदर देन अल्लाह इज द ग्रेटेस्ट एंड इज मोस्ट मर्सीफुल एंड बेनिवोलेंट कम फ्रॉम द ईस्ट कम फ्रॉम द वेस्ट कम फ्रॉम ऑल द डायरेक्शन दिस इज द टाइम टू ऑफर नमाज इन द मॉस्क सो फर्स्ट मिनरेट दैट वाज कंस्ट्रक्टेड इंडिया वाज कुतुब 
मीनार एंड कुतुब मीनार वॉज कंस्ट्रक्टेड प्योरली ऑन इरानियन Iranian pattern. Kutub Minar, when Kutub Minar was constructed, it was purely it was constructed purely on Iranian pattern. So the uh, Turks they also brought along with themselves the Iran uh, Iranian or Persian style of art and architecture. And this minaret, this construction of this minaret is purely Iranian. And its construction was started in the year 1199 when Abak was not the Sultan and he was merely the governor or commander of uh, Muhammad Ghori the Turk. But in the year 1206, Kutbuddin Abak became the Sultan of the Delhi Sultanate, founder of the Delhi Sultanate, and he. Uh, and this construction of this tower was already in progress right from 1199 common era, and uh, this minaret. when he started construction of the, this minaret he uh, in the 1210 he passed away he died from the back of his horse while he was busy in playing chogan or polo and that stick jo jisse gol karte hai na chhadi stick wo uske pet mein ghus gaya peti phat gaya uska on the spot death ho gayi thi abak died on this part couldn't survive that accident and he died but uh, when he died just first story of this tower was completed and artisans of abak they followed a basic pattern while first story was totally made up of red sandstone and a pattern is to be observed see semi circle for first story semi circle followed by spur s p u r spur matlab nikla hua semi circle spur and again semi circle spur and uh, and uh, a balcony was also added a balcony was also added and this balcony this pattern of constructing this kind of balcony is said to be is telectite honeycomb technique latakta hua madhumakhi ke chhatte ke jaisa stalactite hanging seems to be hanging stalactite honeycomb dekhiye na usme bana hua aise comb comb jaisa cells very small cells large number of smaller cells it's called stalactite honeycomb technique and when then abak passed away and uh, uh, for the time being for the next 7 or 8 month abak abak was succeeded by his own son aram shah but but his sultanship was challenged by his own brother in law jija ji shamsuddin iltutmish so shamsuddin iltutmish killed his sala ji aram shah and he became the sultan and he again he passed an order uh, for the completion completion of this tower and when this tower was finally completed during the reign of sultan shamsuddin iltutmish this was a four storied tower and totally 100% made up of white, uh, red sandstone and to decorate this tower minaret they used a pattern of decoration called arabesk a r a b e s q u e arabesk arabesk is a style of writing engraving sacred lines of quran on the stone or panels walls ye sab pe hai na to ye quran ki ayatein hain ayat means sacred lines from the holy textbook of the muslims quran called this pattern of uh, decoration is called arabesk a r a b e s q u e arabesk and when the same style of writing is written on a paper or any other thing not on the stone or walls or roof in any other thing that pattern of architecture is siyahi se likhe saja saja ke likhe that style is called calligraphy jaise kal maine likha tha na apna naam c a d l l i c a l i g r a p h y calligraphy sulekhan acha acha style bana bana ke likhna sulekhan hai na so but right now this tower originally this was a four story tower right now this is five story tower and instead of having red sandstone fifth fourth and fifth stories are equipped with the white marble so something went wrong after sultan shamsuddin iltutmish and during the reign of sultan firoz shah tughlaq During the reign of Sultan Firoz Shah Tughlaq, uh, 
the Sultan who belonged to Tughlaq dynasty of the Delhi Sultanate and he ruled from 1351 till 1386. And during his reign, original fourth story, totally made up of red sandstone, original fourth story was destroyed. It was destroyed in a lightning. And Firoz Shah Tughlaq, he was so stupid that uh, instead of constructing, repairing the fourth story, original fourth story, he got constructed fourth one and fifth one. But he failed to observe basic pattern of the minaret. And instead of uh, following basic pattern, semicircle, spur, semicircle, spur for second story, all semicircle, for third story, all spur or triangle, he got constructed rounded stories and instead of using red sandstone he used white marble so this minaret is a beautiful minaret but only up to the third story and fourth and fifth story is are not very beautiful because they fail to follow its basic pattern of architecture and later on <coughs> after kutub minar several other minarets were also constructed Minarets were also constructed to uh, decorate the buildings, not only for the mujins to call faithful to offer namaz, sirf ajan dene ke liye nahi. Also, minarets were also constructed to decorate the buildings. And Taj Mahal, see, Taj Mahal is a massive structure. So this one, Taj Mahal is a massive structure and it has octagonal main building octagonal main building and a huge bulbous double dome and this octagonal main building is constructed on a raised platform and platform is a very extended one and for the time being in your imagination so just remove all the four minarets and its beauty is immediately perished, finished. Khatam ho jayega. Iska puri khubsurti khatam ho jayegi. Agar ab charo minarets charo kono se hata de. Min these four minarets are constructed to establish connectivity. To establish connectivity with the platform, an extended platform and octagonal main building. And that's why this structure appears to be so beautiful. And this mausoleum, this tomb is also very beautiful, not because of its bulbous double dome, but also because of construction of beautiful minarets or towers. But these towers or minarets are constructed for decorative purposes to link the extended platform with that of octagonal main building. And that's why minarets were constructed. Let's see this much closer view of upper part of, uh, upper portion of this tower or minarets. So, so beautiful and it's very well decorated so having balcony balcony gol gol balcony and just see the base and it's decorated with petra petra dura and what is petra dura it's inlay work fitting cutting and fitting cutting and fitting like cutting and fitting floral designs geometrical geometrical designs and we have this Chand Minar from Daltabad not so not so beautiful and it's of pre-Mughal origin pre-Mughal origin constructed much before the Mughals Chand Minar and a very mysterious minaret a very very mysterious minaret minarets of shaking minarets of Ahmedabad and yesterday I told you people about the unique feature of this uh, these two minarets and while 
these minarets are called shaking minarets shaking minarets of ahmedabad while one mirad one minaret is shaken other starts vibrating ek hilayenge na to dusra apne aap hilega while connecting passage between the two remains vibration free and what causes this vibration is still unknown and it's uh, it has been uh, one of the greatest mysteries of the world history not only history of india but of world history and several uh, ar ar architects engineers iitns and they are indulged several times to find out the real cause of uh, this shaking minerals but they fail to do so they are not able to find out uh, that when one mineral is shaken another starts vibrating while uh, connecting passage remains vibration free so domes arches and minarets dome arches and minarets and also muslims were not uh, they were not allowed to construct the idols or the images because idol worship is prohibited in islam and they were required to develop their own pattern of decoration decorating their buildings and that's why they developed their own pattern of architecture it's called arabesque called arabesque arabesque means taking borrowing sacred lines from the holy quran and engravings on the stone panels doorways stone stone panels us pe acha se saja saja ke uttarash karke banana and this particular style is what we known as petra petra dura inlay work and cutting and fitting cutting and fitting and also decorating with precious and semi precious stones like ruby diamond sapphire and it's very very costly work petra called petra dura and apart from petra dura or along with petra dura work they also started construction of jali jalis or jali work and uh, taj mahal for the taj shah jahan extensively used petra dura and jali work extensively on large scale and see this pattern so frontal portion of the taj octagonal main building arch so see that uh, black color style of writing is arabesque and calligraphy arabesque mainly arabesque and uh, there you can also observe some floral painting like structures but uh, in fact that's not what we known as painting inlay work petra petra dura work and see much closer view of petra dura so stones cut kiye gaye hain fir andar ka stone cut kiya gaya fir fit kar diya gaya itna shandar fitting ki baal bhi nahi dal sakte hain usme itni shandar cutting hai to ek jhatke se lagta hai ki painting hoga बहुत सारे लोग ताजमहल घूमने जाते हैं पेंटिंग समझ के खुश होकर वापस आ जाते हैं एंड देन बिकॉज दे आर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ पेट्रा ड्यूरा पेट्रा ड्यूरा वर्क एंड ब्यूटीफुली इन ग्राफ्ट और स्कल्पचर जालीज सो पेट्रा ड्यूरा कैलीग्राफी आराबेस्क एंड जाली वर्क दीज वर्ड दी पैटर्न ऑफ डेकोरेटिंग देयर बिल्डिंग्स एंड शाहजहां एक्सटेंसिवली नॉट ओनली शाहजहां but his predecessor uh, emperor jahangir also made extensive use of petra dura and when jahangir he got constructed a tomb for his father in law so he had a wife a very beautiful wife of iranian origin named are jante hain aap log sharma keh rahe <laughs> noor jahan नूर मीन्स लाइट जहान मीन्स वर्ल्ड लाइट ऑफ दर्ल्ड एंड 
she was mehrun nisa mehrun nisha and she was married she was already married to a person of afghan origin named sher afgan so sher afgan and one day jahangir saw her in a market meena bazar and she was so beautiful and jahangir felt attracted towards her and he took sher afgan a uh, husband of mehrun nisa in his service and he was sent to sher afgan was sent by jahangir uh, to bengal for an expedition and from there he never returned back <laughs> and she was a she became a widow and finally jahangir she was married to jahangir and jahangir conferred upon her a title of noor jahan light of the universe light of the world and she was of iranian origin and uska jo noor jahan ka father tha etmad ud daula etmad ud daula and etmad ud daula father of noor jahan he was appointed for any higher post or higher authority and when etmad ud daula now father in law of jahangir when etmad ud daula passed away and jahangir is ordered construction of a tomb makbara at agra for his this is father in law etmad ud daula and called tomb of etmad ud daula and tomb of etmad ud daula is the first mughal structure that is 100% completely made up of white marble not only taj mahal but before the construction of taj mahal jahangir already got constructed a tomb for his father in law etmad ud daula uh, uh, completely made up of white marble and jahangir made extensive use of petra dura to decorate the tomb of his father in law and later on shah jahan uh, also started extensive use of petra dura jali work calligraphy and arabesque so they had their the turks and the mughals islamic people they had their own pattern of architecture but apart from uh, using their own pattern of architecture they also took several local elements from gujarat and rajasthan like chhatris chhatris from gujarat and rajasthan so there after the synthesis of islamic architecture and local pattern of architecture there emerged a new pattern of art and architecture that is what we known as indo islamic art and architecture indo islamic art and architecture and apart from construction of domes and arches and minarets and having their own pattern of architecture they also started uh constructing several forts massive massive forts of stone and forts were also constructed during the reign of uh, uh, the sultans of the delhi sultanate and even they got several forts but not as massive and stronger and larger as that of the mughals so there was a sultan who belonged to the tughlaq dynasty of the delhi sultanate named gayasuddin tughlaq founder of tughlaq dynasty and gayasuddin tughlaq he ruled from 1320 till 1325 and he ordered construction of a fort and that fort is now a ruined fort called old fort complex at delhi old fort complex purana purana kila parisar old fort complex delhi and Gayasuddin Tughlaq he when he started construction of uh, a fort for himself as his residential palace and also uh, for strategic purposes he used his he introduced construction of slopy walls slopy walls broader at base and getting narrower and narrower at the top and Tughlaq rulers like Gayasuddin Tughlaq made extensive use of brown sandstone to construct their structures or the forts 
brown sandstone and it's very very difficult to engrave brown sandstone being brown sandstone being much harder and it's very very difficult to make decorations in the brown sandstone and that's why instead of brown sandstone the mughals started using red sandstone red, red sandstone bit softer than in comparison to uh, the brown sandstones and it became easier for the mughal artisans to decorate their buildings and structures and forts and that's why when akbar when akbar ordered construction when he became the emperor in 1556 he ordered construction of a fort for himself uh, uh, like for his residential purposes and for strategic purposes as well a fort was constructed on the order of akbar at agra located in the close, close proximity with the Rajputana rulers and Agra fort is a massive is a massive fort which is made up of red sandstone so Akbar started using red sandstone on large on large scale say this one this is the entry gateway to the old fort complex, Purana Kila, Parisar, constructed on the orders of Gayasuddin Tughlaq. And Gayasuddin Tughlaq made extensive use of brown sandstone. And uh, he started construction of slopy walls, slopy walls called salami. Salami thoda jhukke. Slopy walls. So like pyramidical, also known as pyramidical, not exactly pyramid like, but still pyramidical, broader at base, base and narrower at the top. And uh, he made extensive use of brown sandstone, and that's why Tughlaq structures are not very decorative. <coughs> Tughlaq structures are not so decorative, so very less amount of decoration we could observe in the structures of the Tughlaq rulers. See, so ruined fort and this fort was constructed by Akbar on the orders of Akbar located at Agra and his construction was started in the year 1556 when he became the emperor when Akbar became the emperor and uh, this fort served residential palace palace is palace and also occupied a very strategic location because this fort is uh, located at the close proximity of Rajputana areas and uh, in the beginning Akbar was not acceptable to the Rajput rulers and the Rajput rulers posed continuous threat to the uh, reign of Jalaluddin Muhammad Akbar. So that's why he got constructed a very massive and a very strong fort made up of, mainly made up of red sand, red sandstone called Red Fort Agra. And Red Fort uh, Agra is famous for so many buildings and this particular structure and, and Agra fort was constructed out of red sandstone. So this is structure called Diwane Am or Diwane Am where Akbar heard cases or he received petitions of the commoners and how this building is made up of red, white marble. Originally this structure was of red sandstone but later on during the reign of Shah Jahan he, Shah Jahan, he removed red sandstone and instead of red sandstone Shah Jahan added white marble. So this structure is called Diwane Am or Diwane Am and another structure located in the Red Fort Complex Agra called Diwane Khas where Akbar received state guests, diplomats and had his cabinet meetings. Diwane Khas, na Khas logon ke liye. Diwane Am for the commoners. So Diwane Am, Diwane Khas and so many other structures like uh, Shish Mahal, 
दीवाने आम दीवाने खास एंड खास महल मीना मस्जिद नगीना मस्जिद मुसम्मन बुर्ज एंड अदर स्ट्रक्चर एंड दिस इज द लार्जेस्ट वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट फोर्ट इन इंडिया एंड इन दर्ल्ड एज वेल एंड दिस एंटायर रेड फोर्ट कॉम्प्लेक्स लोकेटेड दिल्ली it was known as during the reign of shah jahan this structure entire complex was called shah jahanabad and shah jahan shifted his capital from agra to delhi and before the reign of shah jahan agra served capital city for the mughals so up to the reign of or uh, up to the reign of jahangir agra remained the capital of the mughals but shah jahan was not uh, interested in agra and he was not much delighted there so finally he decided to shift his capital from agra to delhi and uh, he ordered construction of a huge uh, residential complex called red fort complex delhi called shah jahanabad and not very far from this uh red fort complex shah jahan ordered construction of a huge mosque and that mosque is the largest mosque of india called masjid e jahanuma masjid e jahanuma popularly known as jama masjid jama masjid of delhi jama means chief mosque masjid so chief mosque of any city is called jama masjid even there is a jama masjid of banaras jama masjid of agra jama masjid of aligarh jama masjid of this and that city so jama masjid of delhi it was originally known as masjid e jahanuma and very large mosque and has an extended courtyard which can easily accommodate 25000 namazis at a time to offer namaz so shah jahanabad and it's a very extended fort and this structure located in the red fort complex shah jahanabad this structure is called diwane am or diwane am commonly known as diwane diwane am and this this is a hall this is a mere hall and it's a larger hall and it's totally based on pillars and foliated arches and shah jahan made extensive use of foliated foliated arches and apart from diwane am and diwane am is totally made of red sandstone and uh, nearby this structure diwane am shah jahan also constructed diwane khas diwane khas and see and at this hall or in this hall shah jahan also placed a crown hai na singhasan lagaya and which is made up of <coughs> white white marble and this structure is completely made up of white marble located besides red uh, that diwane am diwane am usi ke paas mein and it's totally made up of white marble and it was originally it was a very very beautiful building very very beautiful hall it was diwane khas of the emperor shah e jahan a very powerful emperor once a very powerful emperor and it was a very very decorative hall now it's not so attractive and if you produce computer graphic image of this hall so while shah jahan received state guests or he had held uh, cabinet meetings it appeared like this very very beautiful hall and this hall is also full of say full of petra dura full of petra dura and it uh, shah jahan uh, to decorate the ceiling shah jahan used gold and silver so its ceiling was full of gold and silver but it was looted 
during the late Mughal period by some people and remaining, uh, remaining gold and silver uh, were plundered and looted by the Britishers and it was restored. Later on it was restored and it was here, it was here that Shah Jahan placed a very costly throne called Peacock Throne or Mayur, Mayur Singhasan. And let, during the time of later Mughals, when Mughal Empire started declining and during the reign of Muhammad Shah, later Mughal ruler, when uh, the Afghan ruler invaded India, invaded the Mughal Empire and in also invaded uh, Delhi city, he had plundered that Singhasan called Mayur, Mayur Singhasan, Peacock Throne. And in those days, Peacock Throne was worth more than 4 crore rupiah, silver coins. It was so costly and it was full of gold and silver and diamond, ruby and sapphire. Peacock, Peacock Throne. So, Shah Jahan got constructed so many structures, so many buildings, Diwane Aam, Diwane Khas and, and also, see one more thing, it was here for Diwane Khas, full of Petra Diura, Mayur Singh Hasan, and Petra Diura and so many other things and uh, it was here on the panels that Shah Jahan engraved Persian lines to praise this building. Originally, those two Persian lines were composed by the Persian poet Amir Khusro. Amir Khusro, a also a disciple of Nijamuddin Aulia. And his tomb is located in Delhi. Nijamuddin Aulia wale complex mein unka tomb bhi hai. So, uh, uh, 13th century Persian poet Amir Khusro, he was proud to be an Indian, Hindustani. And he called himself Parrot of India. Parrot of India. And he took delight in speaking Hindi rather than Persian or Arabic. And he was the first poet who started using Hindavi words, Hindi words in uh, the Persian poetry, Persian poem. And he called, while praising his motherland Hindustan, he once he said, for Hindustan, his motherland, he said, Gar Firdos, Gar Firdos, if paradise, Bar Rue, face to face, if paradise, persist, Gar Firdos, Bar Rue, Jamiast, if paradise persist on this earth, it is this, it is this, none but Hindustan, none but this, for India, for Hindustan, his motherland. 